I am walking through the steps uh, to deploy and I've had to configure a new app <laughs> for this. It's still a learning log app. Uh, so what I've done is uh, at this point, I have run the commands for GitHub. So I have run git config. Uh, you can see global username. I used my own uh, GitHub username. Uh, and then I also did the email. So this is the email that I use for GitHub. Uh, the next step is to create uh, the git ignore file. And for that, uh, you will notice that you've got, uh, this should not be part of it. Uh, you've got a learning log environment. Uh, you've got the PyCache and SQLite 3 files that we do not want uh, uploaded to uh, get and pushed over to the server. Uh, we're going to do a separate migration for that for the database. So we do not want those files uploaded. This file needs to be saved with no extension. So you're going to go to File, uh, Save As. You do need it in the same directory as the manage.py, the requirement, and the runtime files. And you'll just scroll to the bottom and choose No Extension. Okay, and it's dot .git ignore. Okay, so that is what you need to save that under. Uh, if you have not made hidden files visible on your system, you are going to want to do that. Um, I would show the extension of your files, and I would also make all of the files visible, and it explains how to do that right in here. Okay, and then we get into committing the project. So I'm going to go ahead and key in git init. Okay, and this is exactly what you want to see. It initialized an empty repo. Okay, so that's perfect. And then we're going to use the add command. Okay, and normally you do not see all of these little warnings. Um, I did not see them the first time I deployed. And since then, I have been seeing them. And basically, it's just saying that um, the line feed, the ending of each line in Unix is different than Windows. <laughs> and it's replacing um, the Windows line feed with the Unix one, which is not a big deal. Um, I would prefer not to see all that output, but it is showing it to me now. Uh, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and run a commit. So there's a two flags that we are turning on. Uh, the A flag tells Git to include all the change files, which at this point would be pretty much everything. <laughs> and the M flag tells Git to record a log message. So we'll go ahead and press enter. And then we'll do one more command, git status. And what we want is to see it has nothing left to commit and the working tree is clean. And then it is ready for deployment to Heroku. Okay, and that is exactly what I see. So that's perfect. 
So we're going to go ahead and log in to Heroku. Okay, and the first time I did it, it showed this and it is showing this again. And that's all a good sign <laughs> that this one is going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press the enter key. And so you'll notice that you do have to log in. Okay, so now it says that I am logged in, which is awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the page, go back. Alrighty. And let's see. Da, 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 waiting for login. All right, so this is a little weird and I did note it, note this in the hands-on, but it was successfully logged in. But do you see where my command prompt is? It's kind of on top of all of this other code. Um, it's fine. I can continue forward and, you know, finish pushing uh, to Heroku um, because I've already logged in. Okay, so this is a, a little weird kind of uh, output glitch, uh, but everything is fine as long as you see the login screen and it says you're logged in. So the next command that we're going to give is Heroku create. But I think I'm going to clear the screen first to get rid of some of this. Now, now I'm going to do Heroku create. So CLS cre clears the screen. All right. So it is showing me the name that it is giving my app. Although I do like Limitless Plateau, <laughs> I am going to be changing the name. Uh, and once you change the name, uh, your original learning log file is going to be gone. It, it'll be all under the new name that you give it. Uh, so we did the create. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and give the command to push. And so what it's going to be doing is it's going to be taking the files from GitHub and it'll be applying them to the Heroku server and creating our app. Okay, so at this point, uh, it looks like everything worked. And so what I'm going to do is just make sure that the server started correctly, because uh, there's some information that it will display that's kind of useful as well. So we're going to do Heroku PS. And so what this is telling you is how many hours, free hours you have left this month. I have 546, okay? So uh, more than enough uh, for this class. <laughs> so uh, that all looks like that worked. And now I'm just gonna give a command to open up the app. So I'm gonna say Heroku open. And so you don't really have to worry about uh, keying in that 
really long web address uh, because this will open the app for you. And here's your address that you can simply copy and paste. So our next step, we are going to migrate, perform my migrations, which will create the database on Heroku for us. So the command is Heroku run Python manage.py migrate. And all of those OKs are a very good sign. And it does look like it uh, was created correctly. Uh, there is an auto field default it's uh, warning us about, but we will ignore that. And at this point, uh, we do have a running app. Uh, we have no data in it because when you do the migrations, it does not copy over the test data. Test data is test data. You can still access it on you know, the local host, but your production data um, is going to be completely separate. So we are going to create a super user on Heroku. And our next video will cover that.